Okay, I am going to show you today how to work sex-linked or X-linked traits. I usually use the term X-linked because it's a little more descriptive. It tells you that the genes that you are looking at for the traits are on the X chromosome. So if we say X-linked, you know that it's on the X chromosome. And you have to be really careful when you make keys for these problems because you have to include the X's and Y's. So I'll show you how that works. In fruit flies, the gene for white flies is sex-linked, meaning X-linked, recessive. So when you make a key, you make your key the traditional way, and it says big R is red, little r is white, then when you make your parent cross, you have to show the X's and Y's. So cross a wide-eyed female. Females have two X's, therefore they have two alleles. Since she is white-eyed, she is going to be little r, little r. So you just tie the allele to the X. And then we're going to put crossed with a male is XY. Males only have one X, so they're only going to have either or um, for the alleles. They can't be heterozygous or homozygous or anything else. They only have one allele. And it says that the male is a red-eyed male. So he has the big R for red eyes. So in your Punnett square, you're going to have to illustrate the sex chromosomes as well as the trait chromosome. So now, as we look in the Punnett square, this individual is a female, so I'll put an F for female, and she has, she's heterozygous for red eyes, therefore she has red eyes. This female is the same, she's a female with red eyes, XY indicates that it's a male, and he has white eyes, because he has the little R, male and he has white eyes as well. So the question, what percent of males will have red eyes? So the percent of males with red eyes is um, 100%. Sorry, no, I'm sorry, that's a white, sorry. So these males, um, all of the males have white eyes. So there's zero that have red eyes. White eyes is 100%. What percent of the females will have red eyes? So for the red eyes, both of these females are red eyed, so that's 100%. Um, for the males, um, I'm sorry, for the females with white eyes, that's zero. What total percent of the offspring will be white eyed? So what, if we take all of the offspring together, what's the total percent that's white? So you don't have to worry about male or female here, we're just asking how many of them have white eyes. And all the males do, so that's 50% of the total. And what percent of the offspring will be carriers of white eyes? In order to be a carrier, you have to be heterozygous and you have to have the recessive allele. So the females are carriers. Males cannot be carriers because they only have one allele. So that is also 50%. All right, let's work another one. Using the same information in question one, so that means uh, big R is red and little r is white. And it's sex-linked or X-linked. Cross a heterozygous red-eyed female. So she's a heterozygous for red eyes. That means she has a big R and a little r with a red-eyed male. So this time the male is red eyes. And since big R is for red, you're gonna put that big R there. Um, and again, he only has one X chromosome, so he's only gonna have one allele. Whichever allele he has, he will express. What are the genotypes of each parent? So, like we just said, the female is big R, little r, the male, is big R Y. 
Then we're going to do our Punnett square. All right, the first question, what fraction of the children will have red eyes? So if we're looking at all of the children, this one's red, 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 this one's white. So three quarters of all the children have red eyes. What fraction of the children will have white eyes? You only have one out of four that have white eyes. What fraction of the female children, so now we're just looking at the female children, will carry the white-eyed trait? In other words, what fraction are heterozygous? So this one's homozygous dominant, this one's heterozygous, so that's 50%. When it's asking about the females, you can disregard the males because it's, it's asking you for some specific numbers. All right, in humans, hemophilia is sex-linked recessive. So I'm gonna use the letter H, and if it's capital H, that's normal. If it's little h, that is for hemophilia. Hemophilia is a bleeding disorder that's genetic. Um, so the reason that I made the hemophilia trait recessive is because it says it's recessive here. So a female who's a carrier, so let's do her X chromosomes, she's a carrier for hemophilia. Carrier means that she's heterozygous. Is crossed with a, um, marries a male who has normal blood clotting. So her male, sorry, that was my phone, um, has normal blood clotting. So if he's normal, capital H. Then I'm gonna go over here to my Punnett square Put the female here, the male here. What fraction of the female children, so what fraction of the females, I'm not going to think about the males at this point, what fraction of the female children will have hemophilia? Neither of these female children have hemophilia. One second. Then as the, the next question says, what fraction of the female children will be carriers? So again, let's go back up here. This individual is homozygous dominant. This individual is heterozygous, so they are carrying the hemophilia. So that will be half. C says, what fraction of the male children will have normal blood clotting? So now we're just going to look at the males. This male is normal. This male is, um, has hemophilia. We're looking for the fraction that is uh, normal, so that's one half. What fraction of the male children will be carriers? So in order to be a carrier, you have to be heterozygous. And in order to be heterozygous, you have to have two hemophilia alleles. So males cannot be heterozygous. So that answer is zero. What fraction of the male children will have hemophilia? And again, we're one half. This guy has hemophilia, this one does not. All right. Next, okay, we're talking about color blindness. Color blindness is another um, recessive trait that is found on the X chromosome. So two normal visioned parents have a color blind son. So let's make the key first. I'm going to use the letter C for color blindness. Um, the little c will represent color blindness. All right, two normal visioned parents. So I'm going to put them kind of near the top. Mother crossed with father, and they have a son. So there's mom, dad, son. Now the mom and the dad are both normal. So that means mom has, oops, we're using C here. She has a capital C, and then we have to figure out what her other allele is. Dad is also normal, so he has a capital C. Nothing goes on the Y, ever. All right, these are X-linked traits. 
Now their son has color blindness. So in order to have color blindness, he has a little C. So we have to kind of figure out what allele this mother has here. Is she big C, big C, or is she big C, little C? Because both of those would make her normal. So all sons get their Y chromosome from dad. So in that sense, dad kind of determines the sex of his children. Because if he contributes a Y, he has a boy. If he contributes his X, he has a girl. So this boy got his Y from dad. That means he had to get his X from mom. So he didn't get a big X or he didn't inherit a big C from her. He did inherit a little C, meaning that this other allele here has to be a little C. So the mother was a carrier. Boys who have a genetic X-linked trait got that allele from their mother. They didn't necessarily, that doesn't mean their mother has to have the trait, but they got the allele from the mother. All right, in cats, the allele B makes black fur. Um, and little b produces yellow. The alleles are incompletely dominant over one another. A heterozygote um, produces a tortoise shell color. So let's put this in the key. Heterozygous is tortoise shell. And if you don't know what that looks like, tortoise shell cats are sort of black and orange with patches everywhere, similar to a calico cat. So if you don't know what a tortoiseshell cat looks like, you can look it up online. In order to be tortoiseshell, you have to have two alleles. For that reason, only female cats are tortoiseshell. Um, same with calico cats, but there's white in there as well. Um, only females can be calico. All right, um, we're gonna cross a heterozygote, no, sorry. Um, the alleles are sex-linked as well, so these color alleles are sex-linked. Um, cross a tortoise shell female. So female, she's got two X's, and if she's tortoise shell, she's got a capital B and a lowercase b. And we're going to cross her with a yellow male. So he's XY. In order to be yellow, he's going to have the little b. Okay? If the female was gonna be black, she would have to be big B, big B. If the male was gonna be black, he would have to have a big B. You cannot have a, a male who is tortoise shell because he's only got one allele. All right, when we do that cross here. Um, what percent of the offspring, so let's kind of, these two are female, these two are male. Um, this female is tortoise shell, this female is yellow, because she's got two little bees. This male is black, this male is yellow. So what percent of um, the offspring will be yellow? So we've got this one here that's yellow, and this one here that's yellow. So half of them will be yellow. What percent of the offspring will be black? All right, this one is tortoise shell. This one is black. So only one out of four will be black. What percent will be tortoise shell? One out of four. Why is it impossible to have a tortoise shell male? Because males only have one X chromosome. Um, and you need two alleles uh, to be tortoise shell. Okay. All right, and then this last one. Hemophilia is a rare sex linked disorder found almost exclusively in males. People who have hemophilia lack a, a clotting factor that properly clots their blood when they damage tissues. Since males have only one X chromosome, whatever allele they have on their X chromosome is expressed. Females have two X chromosomes, so the only way they can have hemophilia is if they have two recessive alleles, and this is very rare. A rare disease, it's very uncommon to have two very rare alleles. A normal woman, 
So let's make her a genotype. She's normal, so we know she has a big H. Whose father had hemophilia. So since her father had hemophilia, he would have had a little H. She did not inherit a Y from him. She has two X's. So she got one X from mother, one X from father. So that means she must have gotten the dad's little H on his X chromosome. And then we're going to cross her um, with, a, with a man who does not have hemophilia. So he has normal hemoglobin. He has the capital H. So the female is going to go here. She is heterozygous. She is a carrier for hemophilia. It runs in her family. Her husband is not. She's pregnant, and she wants to know the chances. Is it possible for her to give birth to a child with hemophilia? So she would go to a genetic counselor, and they would show her this. Um, it says that she is pregnant with a son. Since we know she's having a boy, we don't have to consider the females here. What are the chances that her son will have hemophilia? Well, here's what her son could be. He could be normal or hemophilia. It's a 50-50 shot, so one half. Is there any way for this, this particular couple to have a daughter with the disease? So here's the two um, possible daughters that she could have. Neither of them have hemophilia. This daughter would be a carrier, but neither of them have it. So the answer is no. What would the father's phenotype be in order for them to have a daughter with hemophilia? In order for them to get a daughter with hemophilia, both parents would have to contribute a little h because a daughter with hemophilia would look like this. She would have to be little h, little h. So that means she'd have to get a little h from her mother and a little h from her father. So her father would have to have this genotype. Now what is the phenotype for that? The phenotype is hemophilia. So this is what answers the question, hemophilia, because I want to know the phenotype, hemophilia. Why is hemophilia uncommon in females? First of all, it's a, it's a very rare disease. Second of all, she would have to have um, two recessive alleles. Her dad would have had to have had hemophilia. Okay. Um, so be sure you've done the amoeba sisters uh, and walked yourself through that because there's some problems to work there also to give you some practice.